Here we go, folks. Welcome to Photoshop Elements 9, and I am going to be walking you through as fast as humanly possible every single feature and everything you can do with Photoshop Elements 9 in just three short hours. This does go to 4 o'clock today, but we take a two-hour break for lunch and then a little siesta in the afternoon, and so that leaves about 20 minutes before, 20 minutes after for, yeah. <clears throat> we got our first phone call already. <laughs> So what we're going to be doing today in Photoshop Elements 9 is being able to go through all the different components here. When we first launch Adobe Elements, Photoshop Elements, you've got two different buttons right here. We've got Organize and we have Edit. We're going to get started with the Organizer, which is one component of Adobe Photoshop Elements, which allows you to put your photos together so that you can very quickly see them, rate them, tag them, and even do facial recognition so you can name, put people's names with their faces in there. We're going to show you how to import and organize the photos and then use the quick edit and fix features within the organizer so you don't have to know much about color correction. This is all pretty automated. There are also other features that we can do to create photo prints and collages that are built right into the organizer, which we will do later in the class, and then also be able to share your photos and creations that you create online via several different services, all built into Elements, all built into the organizer portion of elements. There's actually three different portions of elements and we're going to touch on the organizer and the little um, impression wizard, but they're, whatever they call it. <clears throat> Getting started with elements nine, this is kind of how we're going to break it out. We're going to learn about the interface, the tools, the panels, the menus, do a quick little run through there, teach you some of the quick shortcuts, and how to open files, edit print, and browse files to be able to get them in there, see what you're doing, understand what's going on with the toolbars and such. Then we get into dealing with image sizes and making your canvas larger and smaller, straightening images, cropping images, and learning all about what image resolution really means and how a high resolution and a low resolution image can look bad or good depending on what you do. We're also going to learn some of the very basics of layers, being able to take elements and put them on layers in your file, move layers around, transform, edit, scale, copy, whip, slap, rub, down, shape, flex, moisturize, spindle, fold, mutilate, we can do everything with layers. Um, we'll show you how to drag files into a single document to compose them, and then later on we'll show you how to blend them together. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Understanding the basics of selections. Selections are there so you can go in and isolate portions of your image so that you can copy them, you can edit, color correct those portions without affecting the rest of the image. We'll learn the basic selection tools on how they're going to work for you, or in some cases, against you and how to use the refine selection tool so that you can get really nice selections based on what you tried to get using one of the tools. Brush and color basics, understand how the brush tool works, show you some great shortcuts, how the, all the fantastic eraser tools, because we have things like the magic eraser and the background eraser, and things like the quick selection. If it's quick and it's magic, it's gotta be good. If it's quick and it's magic, it's gotta be twice as good. We're going to show you how to use the paint bucket, choose foreground, background colors, be able to sample colors from the image so you can pick up colors if you want to use it in other um, portions of your image, and fill layers and create gradients. <clears throat> Basic color correcting and editing would be the next topic there, understanding what you're doing with the color editing, change image levels, contrast, lightness, hue, saturation, things like that in your images using some of the automatic tools as well as some of the manual tools we'll go through. They've got very basic features and advanced features that you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do, as well as a basically a walkthrough mode that will walk you through every single step, step by step. Image editing basics. Understand the basics of image editing when you want to go in and remove dust and scratches or things that aren't in the image. Um, use the healing brushes. Fantastic new feature is the healing brush with content aware healing. I mean, who wouldn't love to put their hands on an image and make it all good? Well, doesn't quite get that far, but we'll get you close. <clears throat> use the clone stamp tool, which is one of my personal favorites, and then also show you how to use some of the photo merge features, which are built right in. Filter basics. Um, we've got a whole list of fun filters to use, as well as some very practical filters, sharpening your image, blurring your image, things like that, as well as a whole list of artistic filters that you can go and apply to your image and make them look interesting. I say that in quotes. Layer masks. Masks are new to Elements 9. Understand what they are, how they're going to work for you, and again, against you as well. 
And we have two different type of masks here. We have both ve vector and raster masks, which will completely blow some of the people away because most people didn't know what masks were, and now we offer you two different versions and create some basic composed images where we can put them together using masks. Type, you know, for typing those little things in, you know, under your images, mom and dad at the beach, you know, things like that. We'll show you the whole set of layer styles that we can do for rounded type, cool, interesting, fun stuff, and lots of type shortcuts as well. File output, because once you're done with this whole thing, you're going to want to go in and <clears throat> print all your images, use the built-in upload features to share these things online, make your own personal items. And by the way, if you're watching this class, next Friday we're doing a class on how to take all your images that you've done and do all these fantastic personal items for you, like right around the holidays. Like, who doesn't need 400 mouse pads of your niece and nephew? Things like that. You can also share your photos and creations online through this. And of course, last but not least, get inspired and try it all yourself. First of all, yes, you can do it, OK? Once you get this video, you can do anything. Um, use this video to guide you along. That was a very direct sales pitch. Buy it. It's $49, folks. When have you ever purchased anything for $49 for, that's six hours long? Never. I mean, even a flight's three hours long, and it costs 10 times as much. Um, things that can help you along with this, people completely ignore the help menu. Look online for other people's videos on what they've done. Also, go to adobe.com for videos. And one thing that we have done with this class, as well as next week's class, is we have partnered with um, Studio Girl Graphic, Scrapbook Graphics. And last year, when we did the six-month Photoshop class, if you weren't aware of that, Right around the holiday times, we did the scrapbooking class, which was like the best session ever. And you can still download that particular class online at creativelive.com for free, that particular scrapbooking class. All of the scrapbooking items were provided for us by Maya at Studio Girl Scrapbooks. And they were so gracious to give us this. And so we decided to go ahead and say, thank you so much for doing this yet again. They provided us a whole bunch of new graphics this time scrapbookgraphics.com, and you have hundreds if not thousands of scrapbooking items that you can go and use, take, put into your Photoshop Elements class for backgrounds, frames, picture frames, be able to create calendars, personal items for every single event, holiday, thing you could possibly imagine out there. I mean, weddings, backgrounds, brushes, stamps, calendars, different type fonts, everything else. If you want to put something fun and interesting together with all of your personal photos and you want some great inspiring backgrounds, they're here, they're fantastic prices, and scrapbookgraphics.com provided us with these that we're going to use today. <clears throat> now that means we have to get started. I'm all a quiver. Okay, so am I. First, when we launch Photoshop Elements, you're going to come up with a screen here that is going to give you the basic splash screen on what's going to happen. One of the things down in the lower left-hand corner here is you will be getting a login section of this screen. And you can create an Adobe identification. It doesn't cost you anything. You just username and a password. And it allows you to access a lot of these free benefits. It also allows you to use a lot of the other features in here as well. So I strongly suggest that you go in and you get your personal Adobe ID in there and sign in. I've signed in before. You get a whole bunch of stuff, automatic online backup, two gigs of photo storage online. I've joined Photoshop.com. I don't know why, partly because I'm an Adobe certified expert, so I probably should be in the Photoshop.com area. Whole bunch of things that you can do right here. You have um, access to tips, tricks, videos, everything else when you sign in, it's worth doing. This splash screen comes up and you can either launch into the organize section or the edit section. See? When you see this splash screen, we're going to start off with the organizer here. By clicking on the organize button, we're going to get into the organizer section of Photoshop Elements. To click on the edit, we're going to go right to Photoshop Elements. So if you don't see this splash screen and you come up with the actual editing portion of uh, Photoshop Elements, we can go up into the upper right-hand corner here and click on the Organizer button. By clicking on the Organizer button, it's going to launch the Organizer. 
which is another application in and of itself. <clears throat> and we wait for it. It's a whole different application here. We need the drum roll for this too. Yes, we do. Okay. So here's the elements organizer. <clears throat> and this is what we have right off the bat. I didn't load anything in here because I wanted to walk you through the quick process of being able to get your photos in here to be able to use them. Now, the organizer allows you to put these photos in here so that you can browse them very quickly and you can see what's going on as well as having access to the features within Photoshop Elements. We can go in and we can choose from a list of items here, from iPhoto, from my camera, or by searching through my hard drive here as well, or from files and folders. I have a whole bunch of files and folders on my desktop here and I'm going to go and I'm going to import those. And I can follow these, they walk you through these steps very, very easily. So on my desktop here, I've got all these um, images for Photoshop elements here. And I am going to get all these and I'm going to click on Get Media. And it's going to load all these items in here very quickly. I've got 468 items, random items, a lot of cars, trip to Italy, you know, some friends, family, things like that. Loads them all in fairly quickly. And one item that wouldn't load in load there. Okay. So once we load these all in here, we have um, our ability to go ahead and back up and synchronize our copies to our secure online account. This is part of signing into the adobe.com, which allows you to have two gigabytes of backup so that if something goes wrong with your computer or you lose stuff, you can go ahead and back everything up and then you have access to get it back up because it's already backed up in the cloud there. Right now, I'm just going to say, remind me later, because I don't want to go through all of this stuff. And when you import all of your items in here, every time you import the items into your organizer, you're going to see what you last imported. So you're not going to see all your images all at once. They do a really good job at coming up with warning boxes like this, saying sh the, the only items you're going to see here are the ones you just imported. To see the rest of the catalog, catalog click Show All. And Show All is right here at the top. and we click that, and it's going to show all of our items in the catalog. Over to the right here, we've got four different tabs here, Organize, Fix, Create, and Share. We're still an organizer. We see all of our pictures through here. We can very quickly scroll through. I'm just using my mouse wheel on this. Up at the top, I can control the size of my thumbnails here as well. I can right-click on any one of these images here, or Control-click, and I get a whole slew of options copy, print, um, delete this from the catalog here, rotate, flip, edit with these certain things, adjust the time and the date, apply ratings to this, one, two, three, four, five stars, or mild, mild to spicy, whatever you want. <clears throat> and we can show the properties, getting information on all these. Great way to organize these photos. See what you have there. You can scroll through this very, very quickly and see what you've got in there. And we are in the Organize tab right here, over there, and we just click on Organize, and we're going to see what we have here. Up in the upper right-hand corner, we have our display. And if I click on the display here, we can see our thumbnail view, which is what we're seeing here. We can also show our import batch, and we can also use, show our folder location. Our folder location will give us all of the folder locations right here on the left-hand side. So when I click on a specific image here, it will actually show me where it is on the hard drive. It's nice to have, and we can do that under the display portion of this. I'm going to go back to the thumbnail view and see what's going on. Question from the chat room. Mm -hmm. um, AZ Factor is noticing that the, this feature looks like Bridge. This feature looks exactly like Bridge. And this treats it very much like Bridge. And this allows you to go and it kind of works like Bridge and Lightroom all in one. When I make edits to these images in here, I actually have a secondary image that it gets made to. So if I do color correction directly in here, it'll go ahead and create a copy of this. For those of you that are not familiar with Bridge, it looks very much like this. Bridge ships with all the Adobe applications. And I'm going to launch Bridge right now. And this is what Bridge looks like. Bridge allows me to go in, and this is a much more robust finder window so that you can, all this is doing is just looking at images on your hard drive, your desktop, wherever, and giving you lots of information, lots of possibilities to work with. 
The organizer window here is a simplified version of Bridge that's geared toward editing, organizing, and doing things with your particular photos. Bridge goes and does all types of media for everything that you have on your hard drive. So yes, you're going to have a lot of similarities with Bridge. If you know Bridge, this should work uh, pretty well for you right here. You can organize by date, newest first, oldest first as well, and go through and view your images here, look at stuff, get, take things out of your organizer. When you take them out of the organizer, you don't take them out of the hard drive, you just take them out of your organizer, okay? Nice to have. If you use iPhoto, this is very much along the same lines of iPhoto because iPhoto, you can put these things into albums and organize that way as well. This is just another way to kind of bring the organizer into the realm of working within Photoshop elements. So there's lots of different applications there on your machine that can do this. This just happens to be tied directly into elements. <clears throat> if you never get into organizer here, you're not going to be losing a lot of information about the core basics of elements. You'll still be able to do that. Now, if you reside in Organizer, and you're working on anything in Organizer here, you can click on certain images here, and because we have our four tabs over here, or Organize, which is what we're in, we can go over to the Fix portion of the menu. The Fix portion of the menu allows us to do what I call fixes in a can. These are presets that Photoshop Elements has already done for you, and you can click on like the Auto Smart Fix for Color, Auto Color, Auto Levels, Auto Contrast, Auto Sharpen, and just simply go in and click on this button and we can automatically sharpen or add contrast to these images. So I'm gonna click on this image right here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see. And I can go in and do auto levels on there. It'll go in and it'll do an auto levels on it. I get my little icon up in the corner here showing me that, oh, I just uh, zoomed out. Let me uh, get back up here. There we go. You get the little icon in the corner right there showing me that an edit has been made to that image. And we have a little pull tab right here on the side, which allows us to click on that, and it shows us the edited version along with the original version right here. Okay? So let me, let me reduce this down in size just a bit so they get side by side. Okay, so here's my edited version, and I've got that little icon right there. And here is my original version right there. You can see this little tab right here, allows me to window shade that back in so they're all nested together or stacked, and I can open it up. So edited version, original version, all right in my organizer right there. This is great if you have no idea what you're doing with color correction, everything else, you can go in, you can apply these quick and easy fixes in your organizer, and now, now you have two different copies of this. This copy resides in the hard drive right next to this copy right here. So, the fix portion, a lot of easy stuff. Nice and simple. If this is as far as you want to go, go into the organizer and use this and see what happens. It's great. You can click on the bottom for more options here. Question from the chat room. Does uh, Elements have camera raw? Elements does have camera raw. Okay. Yep. So if you have a raw photo, you can actually open it up. It'll open the camera raw dialog box, and you can walk through all of the camera raw stuff that you were normally used to in Photoshop. So, fix in Organizer here is a whole bunch of um, fixes in a can, simple stuff that's all preset for you. You don't have control over you know, how to go in and adjust these things. It's gonna go in and it's gonna do the best it possibly can. Um, <clears throat> you can go under more options here, and when you go under more options, you can actually edit with like Photoshop Elements to get the full-on version. The Create tab right here allows you to go in and create whole bunch of things from your organizer. You can select multiple photos and you can do photo prints. We'll zoom in on this so you can see. We can do photo prints. We can do a photo book, greeting cards, photo calendar, photo collage. Photo collage is great. You call it up, you have numerous different templates and you literally just drag your photos in to those templates and you go from there. Now next week we are doing a class on how to use all these things and get them printed for your coffee cups, you know. You can even do tennis shoes with your pictures on them. We're gonna show you that next week because it's a totally different class. But if you wanna order a whole bunch of photo prints or print them on your own printer, create a photo book, print it out, or bring it someplace to have it done. Greeting cards based on what you have here, calendars, create an instant movie, put all your DVDs on there for, with a menu so you can send it to somebody who's got an older computer that they can create a, their own little 
DVD movie, you can actually create photo stamps, picture on it with actual U.S. postage that you can buy, put on your envelopes, and so you can have a little uh, picture of Fifi on there and send it to everybody who doesn't care. <laughs> That's under the Create tab, and then the last tab here is Sharing. You can go and create, um, share them as online albums, many different ways to do that as an email attachment, so you can email these right from Organizer, burn a DVD or Blu-ray disc, fantastic for those people who their kids decided to buy them a Blu-ray player and they have nothing to play on it, now you can create that. Online video sharing, you can make a video of this and post it online as well, Put it, send it to a mobile phone, share it to Flickr or Facebook or Smug Mug Gallery and create a PDF slideshow or Kodak Easy Share Gallery, all within your Organizer. And all it requires you doing here is going in and selecting the pictures that you want to either fix or create or share, and you can select multiple pictures. How you do that in the organizer is pretty simple. If you want to go in and select pictures in your organizer, all you have to do is click on a picture, and it highlights. If you hold down your shift key and you click on another picture, it's going to select all those pictures in between the first one and the last one. Yes? Can you import your iPhoto images into Organizer? Absolutely. When we opened up Organizer, that was the first item that came up that says, if you want to import, an iPhoto was the, the first thing in the list. And uh, AZ Factor also wants to know if you can specif specify what output service is used for prints. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The, lots of different output services. Um, there are so many items here that we could spend all day just on what we could do for output for these which is what we're going to do next week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So when you want to select multiple images here, if you're on the Mac, all you have to do is hold down your Command key, and I'll show you the keystrokes here. Command click on non-sequential images, and you will be able to select those. All the ones that you have selected here, you can then go in and fix, create, or share based on what you have selected. If you are on the PC, you can go in and control click and select all of these and go in and pick those. Once you have those selected, you can edit, share, fix, do whatever you have. So the organizer is a place where you can put all your images, see all your images, sort through them, find out what you want to do, and be able to go in and open these images up and edit them in Photoshop Elements. Now, editing these in Photoshop Elements is pretty simple. We can click on the image here, and if we right-click on the image, we have this whole list of things that we can go ahead and um, take a look at. We can also go into the file menu and we can add more photos to our organizer here from the camera, from files, from searching, from my iPhoto right there. Um, I can go ahead and back up my catalog so if I want to go ahead and make sure I have a backup copy of it I can. I can order prints right through here. Edit any of my photos here. I can undo anything that I've done to my photos by going into the edit menu. I can rotate, I can edit these in Photoshop Elements. So if I want to edit this right in Photoshop Elements, I can bring this in and do um, anything that I want, ratings, visibility, and I can find them. I can have, list a whole bunch of things that I can find these by. By the date, if I want to, by a caption or a file name that I put on there, by versions, because as I go in and I import more and more images into my catalog here, it's going, or my organizer, it's going to go ahead and catalog these by import date. I can search by that, by history, what's been emailed, how it's been imported, things like that. And we're pretty good, yeah. And question from Redden11 in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Once you made the selection, can you just show the images that are selected? Um, you probably could if I went in and double-clicked on them. No, that didn't work. Let's go back under display here. <clears throat> That did not do it. No, not like Bridge that I know of. But we can go in and we can actually, when you go into Organize here, we can actually choose what we want here and then we can filter them through people, places, events, others, so if there's certain tags on them or by ratings, then we can go under the selection here or this portion here and be able to isolate them that way. So if we have ratings, we have verticals, we have horizontals, we have all types of metadata applied there, then we can go and we can choose that. So you could basically name a series of 
photos and then select for that series. Right. I could create a new album over here on this portion of it, and then I could just put those in that album so that they would all be together at one particular location. So like all the trips, all the pictures from Italy, since it's under just the basic heading of last import, um, I may want to go ahead and create a new catalog here, and I could just go in and do a new you know, album here or load them in from the file. It's going to create a new album so that I can click on them, and they will be all together in that album. Yeah, Redden suggested, so tag as, say, three star, two star, and then you can select that way. Right, and then you can use your keywords here in the lower right-hand corner of the organizer to go through and see you've got all these smart tags here for things, you know, and you can tag all your images cool. so that you can see that. Works very much like Bridge. If you're used to using Bridge or you want to learn about Bridge, you certainly can. So we can open up, oh, I didn't want to rate all those. I'm going to go in and I'm going to open up one image here. And I can do that by right clicking on here and just say edit with Photoshop elements. I can also go under the edit menu here and say edit with Photoshop elements. And you can see the shortcut for that is command I or control I on the PC. I think that stands for I want to. <laughs> Can't complete it because the editor was busy. OK, thank you very much. Well, I'm going to right click here, edit with Photoshop elements. <laughs> the editor is busy. Um, <clears throat> OK. So another way of opening your images <laughs> up here, and it seems to be working a little bit slow. Another way of opening up images is you can actually go in and drag your file right onto the Photoshop elements icon in your dock, and we're right on the PC here, or on the Mac, I'm sorry. Drag it right onto that icon and open it up right in there. Now we actually get into Photoshop Elements. Yes, it should open from Organizer in Photoshop Elements, but apparently it was on a coffee break or something. So it works, yes, I know. OK, so here we are inside Photoshop Elements, and this is what we see, a newly redesigned interface for Photoshop Elements 9. Um, takes into account the whole Adobe redesign with the new features that they've put into CS5. And if you follow that along, that'll mean a lot to you if you don't. Here's the new interface. There you have it. Okay. Right across the top here are the very basic items here. New file, save, help kind of stuff. If you do not have an Adobe account or you have not logged in, you can go ahead and access it here. I have logged in, so it already knows who I am. So everything I do will be recorded and reported to my mom. <laughs> not really. OK. A lot of things going on in the interface right here. On the left-hand side, we have our toolbar going all the way down. We're going to go through all these tools. We have our control bar going right across the top here. And this control bar is going to give us a lot of the functions and features that are going to be used for each and every tool. You'll also notice when we hover over anything, we are going to get a tool hint telling us what is going on with this particular file, dialog box, checkbox, radio button, panel, whatever it may be. Very, very helpful. It's also very helpful, too, because Photoshop Elements is for people who just want to go in and they just want to casually do this kind of stuff. They're not going to spend 40 hours a week doing this. They want to be able to go in and kind of learn as we go and see the nice features. Down in the lower right-hand corner here as well, you can see it says, to, uh, click here to take a tour, of the, uh, of a tour of the full edit tools. You can click here. And when you click here, another application launches within. And it is the Photoshop.com inspiration browser. Okay. Now, you can also sign up to Adobe photoshop.com and you can get into that community as well but you have a whole bunch of tutorials that you can see here see things that people have done take the full tour it walks around walks you around so you can see great stuff interesting things use the interface how to apply stuff interesting elements that people have added to their professionals you name it and even submit a tutorial yourself that's one of the options that you can do you can search the all through this, or you can search the entire web for this kind of stuff. This is yet another feature that Photoshop Elements has added in here. So that if you feel completely left out, here's something else that you can remember a login and password for so that you can <clears throat> split your time between this and Facebook. Yeah. So that's there as well. OK. So running right across the top here, if you're a Photoshop user, this all seems very familiar. 
If you're not a Photoshop user, this is great because if you are a Photoshop user, these menus are five times as long. So feel privileged that we only have 60 hours worth of information that we have to jam into six today instead of 600 hours of information. Basic elements right here. If you want to go in and change any of your preferences under the preferences menu, general preferences, and these are things that as you get working with this, watch the tutorial videos, talk to your friends, you can go through and set these preferences. Pretty much how they're set is going to work pretty well for you. There's nothing that's going to make or break your files by going through and messing with any of these preferences. You, know, you can leave them set the way you want to unless you actually have a reason to get in here and go through and use these, but your preferences are all under there. Basic file menu items, create a new file, open files, close, save the files, organize your open files, which will launch organizer there. Print or order prints, put things together under a contact sheet or print package, that kind of thing as well. People who like to use keyboard shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop Elements are really important because a lot of the things that we're going to show you, you're not going to be able to find through the menus. You're not going to be able to find through the tools either. These are shortcuts that just are kind of unwritten shortcuts that you just have to either come to the live class or pay the $49 for or personally hire me to come out there and show you all the shortcuts. Either of those works, any of those works. So file menu, create, open, close, save, print, import, export. Edit menu, being able to undo or redo files, cut, copy, paste, fill layers here, add new pages to this. Pretty basic stuff. Image menu, this is pretty important. Go in and rotate your image. Being able to flip things, straighten your image, transforming things, because nothing is ever good enough. We all like to transform everything. Crop, and the fantastic recompose feature. We can divide scanned photos, we can resize our image, make our canvas size larger, change our color mode here. We can enhance our photo, auto smart fix, auto levels, auto contrast, auto color correction, all of that. And this was all part of the organizer, and we have the auto feature here as well that we can run through all that kind of stuff as well. Layers, creating layers, duplicating, moving layers, putting them in order, merging layers, arranging them, stuff like that. Most of that will be done through the layers panel. Select menu, be able to go in and create selections, move these selections, modify them, make them smaller and larger, all under the selection menu. menu. Filter menu, doing all sorts of fantastic things, and you can get a preview of the filter menu by looking over here and seeing all the fantastic things that you can do with filters. View menu, basic stuff, zooming in, zooming out, fitting it on screen so you can see everything that's going on. Basic stuff. The window menu is where you're going to find a lot of your panels. And your panels are going to be off over here, and this is what they call the panel bin, which is where everything goes. And right now we've got our effects panel, our content, and our layers panel over here. And you can see that those are the basic panels. If you're looking for something and it's going to be a panel, it's going to be right here. And then, of course, the help menu, which nobody ever wants to admit that they need help, use it. So the Photoshop Elements help is really handy. You get started, key concepts, and video tutorials right there. You can also go to your Elements Inspiration Browser, which we just showed you. We got that by clicking down here at the bottom. But you can also get your Elements Inspiration, which allows you to go to Photoshop.com and get caught up in that community and expand your horizons, meet new friends, and <clears throat> then find out exactly how much you know about Photoshop Elements and how much more you want to know. And then you buy the $49 class. Yes, David. Molly in the chat room asks if there is a preference panel that to set up at the beginning. There is no preference panel. Um, your preferences are just under the Photoshop Elements section here, and they're all set right from the get-go. So if you want to edit those preferences, then you just go under Photoshop Elements at the very top of your menu, and then you can set all those preferences. Mm -hmm. OK. On the right-hand side of our screen here, we've got our edit panel. We have our Create panel, and we have our Share panel. I'm not in the sharing mode right now, so we'll just go through the Edit. <clears throat> edit panel here, we have three different modes. We have the full Edit mode, which is what we're going to show you today, how to actually get in, use the tools, use the panels, be able to get in, you know, wrench around on this stuff, change the fluids, you know, do a buff spackle, shave, pluck, moisturize, everything. 
That's the full version. The quick version brings us in and gives us just very basic editing tools here. The interface changes. We have just a very simple tool panel over here. And with this tool panel, we have just a few basic tools. Zoom in, zoom out, move it around, make some selections, crop it. Red eye, take the toothbrush, do a little bit of foaming bath salts there, and make a picture. That's not really the official names there. I'm just telling you what they are. But the quick edit here, we can go in and do a smart fix. And we have some lighting adjustments here as well. Color fixing, balance, and sharpness. All of these right here. And I just clicked on the little twirlies here to open and close that, those up. This is really quick, OK? That's why it's called quick. And then last, we have the guided tour. The guided tour will walk you through each and every one of these steps here so that you can find out what to do. If you're new to Photoshop Elements and you're not watching this class, then you're not learning about these features. But if you are watching Photoshop Elements and you want to go ahead and say, somebody calls you up and say, hey, don't you know Photoshop Elements? And say, yes, I do, and I don't want to spend the time. But here, let me show you the guided feature. The guided feature allows you to walk through all these items, how to crop a photo, recompose a photo, rotate or sharpen, lighten, darken, enhance the colors, touch up, fix distortion, you know, photo merge, group shots, you know, remove unwanted person from rowdy wedding party, you know, take off 10 pounds, all this stuff. It's all there. Yes, David. Um, someone from the chat room like, would like a quick reminder as to how to get a photo from the organizer to the edit. Okay. Um, when you are in the organizer, you're supposed to be able to just go in and right-click on this and choose from the drop-down menu when you right-click, Edit with Photoshop Elements. And that should bring you right in. And now it does. Before, it was having issues. Yeah, I think it was on its coffee break. You should be able to do that. Command-I is the function that's supposed to do that, and it was having issues. So it's still the function. There we go. So the guided tour allows us to go in and say, I want to go in and crop a photo. And I'm not used to cropping a photo. I don't know what the crop tool is. I, you know, I've used whiteout on my screen before, and it's never worked. It never turns out that way. So I'm under the edit mode here, and I'm on the guided, and I click on crop photo. And it tells you right here. It brings the crop up for me, and it says, here it is. You use the crop tool to do this. You can go ahead and do this. And do you want to constrain this? OK, you know, I want to use the ratio of the photo. I want it to be this particular size, all that. And then I can go in, and I see I can pull on these little handles here. And I've got this little checkbox down here that says yes or no. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. What do I do? What do I do? Well, you know what? If you ever get into a pickle right here, the escape key works wonders, OK? Goes through, and it is absolutely fantastic. You hit the escape key, and escape will save your bacon. If you've lost your bacon and you need to have it saved, this will work. If you ever get into anything right here, that is the number one key you need to use, escape. Right there on the upper left-hand corner, hit it. No harm, no foul, OK? So the guided tour allows you to walk through all of these. When you're done with the particular element of that guided tour, down at the bottom here, you need to make sure you hit done so that you can get back to your whole list of features here. And there's lots of it. You know, there's even a fun edit here. But that's only for later when you're really ready to you know, break out of the bounds there. So the guided tour is great if you, there's a lot of cool techniques that you want to use. Quick, if you don't want much input there, you just want to be able to go in and do some very basic but with minimal input, and then the full-on edit right here. This is what we're going to use. And then, of course, we're going to get into the Create panel here, and also the Share panel, which allows us to create a whole bunch of features based on our images that we are going to make better, and then be able to share those features. So we're going to stay in the edit mode as we stand right here. You'll notice at the bottom of my screen right here, this is something that's called the project bin. And this shows me all of the files that we have open. Because Photoshop and Photoshop Elements have gone to a tabbed feature here, which up at the top of my open window, I have tabs here that show the windows that I have open. And I can click on those. And if you're used to Photoshop, this is exactly the same. We click on the tab, and we can see what we have open. Now, the one thing that I wish Photoshop would have that Photoshop Elements does and Photoshop, the real version, doesn't, is this project bin, which allows us to see all those open files. And we can just double click on these open files and just scroll right through them. If this project bin is not visible or you don't see it there, we can go under the window menu and we can call up our project bin, which is right there. 
but also at the bottom of our window too, at the very bottom will show us all of our open files here. So if we don't know how to get through all of these, go down to the bottom of the window menu and it shows us right there and we can see what's going on right through there. And we can have multiple files open and this is our little browser window, our little project bin down here so we can very quickly scroll through. It also makes it nice and easy to be able to grab from that and drop it right into our window or our layers as we work. <clears throat> 45 minutes into this already, folks. Can you believe it? And we still have gotten nowhere. But we'll continue on. Okay. So I'm going to pull my toolbar over here so we can see this a little bit better and make a little bit more sense. There we go run through the tools fairly quickly here so we can see what's going on. You'll notice that these tools are cut into sections here. So we've got our four basic tools that are right around here divided by this bar here. Now they do this for a reason because we have different sections of tools. These are our basic tools to navigate around our document. Our move tool, our move tool is what we're going to use to move virtually anything. If we want to move something on a layer or move an object across the screen or be able to rotate something or select something, we're going to use our move tool. Our zoom tool here, well, you know what that is, zoom in, zoom out. Our hand tool to be able to just click and move the image around the screen. If we have it zoomed up really big and we want to get to another portion, we use the hand tool. And then of course our eyedropper tool so we can go in and sample the delicious goodness that is in there. So those are our basic navigation tools. The next set of tools right here are going to be our selection tools. And this is, allows us to go in and select portions of our image so that we can either isolate them to cut and copy them or be able to transform them or be able to move them to another portion or even another image. We have our marquee tools here and you'll see that there's a couple tools that are nested. When you see the tools here with a little black triangle next to them, that means there's more than one tool in there. Some people get a little bit um, disoriented when they see these because the last tool that you used is the last tool that's going to show up. So some people may have a toolbar that looks like this, other people may have a toolbar that looks like this, and then they say, oh my gosh, mine looks completely different. It sure does, but all those tools are nested together. All these tools have keyboard shortcuts, and once you get really quick at this, you'll notice you can hover over any one of these, up comes the tool hint, and it gives you the name of the tool, and in parentheses gives you the keyboard shortcut. It's a simple one key shortcut, and it's usually just a letter. So the move tool is always V. You type in V, it always goes to the move tool. The zoom tool is Z, the hand tool is H. Quick and easy way to go through and use those tools. Nice little shortcut there. You don't have to remember it. If you want to forget it, you certainly can. Now, once you become a power user, all these tools nested together, say the lasso tools, these are all labeled L. So if I type in L, I'm on the move tool, if I type in L, I'll get to my lasso tool, but how do I get through all my other lasso tools here? Repeatedly clicking L will get me through all of those. Okay, so just type in L, repeatedly. AZ Factor asks what the keyboard shortcut for the crop tool is? Um, keyboard shortcut for the crop tool is C. No, C. K. So, no, C. K. K. C. So, lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool for anything that contains iron, polygon lasso tool. We have our magic wand tool, and if it's magic, it's absolutely fantastic, so it's got to be good. <clears throat> and our selection brush tool, as well as our rectangular and elliptical marquee tools. And then we get into the fun tools. These are our editing tools, okay? adding type, being able to crop our image, and our fantastic recompose tool. This is awesome. I love the recompose tool. Let's just go ahead and um, not do that right now. Come on, well, I've got into the mode now. Wait for the spinning wheel. Okay, great. Yes. So we'll get out there, go back to the crop tool. There we go. We have our cookie cutter tool and our cookie cutter tool is unique to Photoshop Elements. Our cookie cutter tool is actually called the cookie cutter tool, and it is for those technical people out there, it's draw for drawing vector shape layers. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, we had to do the technical term, didn't we? The straighten tool, if you have any uh, images that are rotated, fantastic, easy way to go ahead and straighten your images as well. 
the red eye tool, which we don't use as much anymore because a lot of the cameras out there now take care of the red eye as well, but we can show you that. And our fantastic spot healing brush and healing brush. So if you have anything named spot, this healing brush will take care of it all. And then the normal healing brush. We have our clone stamp tool as well, great for going in and retouching objects, as well as our three favorite erasers. The eraser, the background eraser, and the magic eraser. Not only does it erase, but it magically erases. And those are all E right there, so you can go through that. So those are all of our editing tools. This isn't supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be hard work, and it's supposed to be diligence. We have the audience members here you know, laughing, but that's okay. Next on the list here, we have all of our painting tools. We have our brush tool, and we're going to use these extensively. And inside our brush tool, we've got our brush, impressionist, color replacement, and pencil tool. And then next to that is our smart brush tool and our detail smart brush tool, which allows us to go in and do smart things, like go in and create all these wonderful types of color correction by using just a brush, where we just paint over certain areas and it automatically takes care of those areas. Pretty cool, huh? We have our paint bucket tool, and so we can just apply paint. We have gradient, and then we have our custom shape tool, which allows us to go in and create shape layers as well our blur, sharpen, and smudge tool, along with our sponge, dodge, and burn tool, too, so that we can blur, sharpen images here. Or in, with this, we can saturate and desaturate images as well. And then last, our color picker. So we can choose colors, be able to apply that to layers, type, paint with it as well. So there's our basic tools that we're going to go and use. Now, one thing that I want to point out, too, so that we <clears throat> see what we're doing is, Every time I select a tool, the control bar right up here is going to change, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of options for that particular tool. This is very important as we go through this, because this is where you're going to be able to adjust the tools to make them work like the way you want them to work. Because unlike you know the new game stations that are coming out there that you no longer need a controller for, you can just simply think, and it's going to do what you want. We haven't gotten quite to that point with Photoshop Elements, so you still need to click those little buttons because it doesn't understand your intent unless you actually go up here and say, yes, this is what I want to do. Crazy as it may seem, but that's where we are in today's world, folks. Two weeks it may change, but you need to pay attention to the control bar. Those control bar will change every single time you click on a different tool. And there will be a lot of different items as we go through these, but the control bar is something we really have to pay attention to because what works on your machine won't work on your friend's machine because they'll have different settings, okay? So very basics of going around and <clears throat> navigating around your images. When we have an image on screen here, we can go in and move this all around. We can zoom in and zoom out here. Of course, we can use our zoom tool. And when I click on my zoom tool here, or click Z, I just get my basic zoom tool here. And a lot of people just go in and click and click and click to zoom in and zoom out. Most people are like, well, of course. Well, if you want to zoom in on something with an image here, take your zoom tool, click and drag over what you want to zoom in on, and you get your little marching ants, and then let go. That's going to zoom in to the size of your screen in the area that you went ahead and zoomed in on. You can get carpal tunnel by clicking and clicking so many times. When the zoom tool is active, you'll see in your control bar up here, we've got a whole bunch of buttons. We can go ahead and click on the fit to screen, which is going to fit it right back in. We can say fill the screen, or we can see the actual size of the image, which is the print size. Okay, it's the actual size of the image was shot at. I also have my drop-down menu right here, which right now it's set at 40%. I can click on the drop-down menu next to it and then slide the little slider back and forth here, or I can enter in a value right there and then hit return and get my size of my image anywhere that I want. Simple and easy. Simple and easy to fit right in screen there as well. Under the view menu, very simple shortcuts here. Command zero fits to the screen. Command one is actual size. Command minus zooms out, and command plus zooms in. The plus and the equals reside on the same key. So in the full version of Photoshop, this is command plus, just to be technical. So command plus, you zoom in. Command minus, you zoom out. Command zero fits to window, command one is actual size. Great shortcuts to have. If you don't want to remember those, 
you can double click on your zoom tool and it's going to fit at actual size. Double click on your hand tool and it fits it right to the window. Why not? You know, if we're going to throw out a whole bunch of shortcuts, let's go ahead and give them all to you. The hand tool is here. If you're zoomed in and you want to work around your image, we can take the hand tool and the shortcut for that is simply H. And with the hand tool active, we can then move around our image here because we may want to go in and do some detail work and clean up. Uh, we may want to go in and uh, <clears throat> remove whatever it is here. So we want to zoom in, but we want to see, yeah, maybe get that rid of that here. And the hand tool allows us to move all around our image. Now, with our hand tool and our zoom tool here, as you get more used to this kind of stuff, two quick shortcuts that are absolutely fantastic. As you start to work within in Photoshop Elements and you want to start to move around a little bit quicker, I may have the Move tool active because I was doing some things, and I want to be able to just move my image over a little bit. Without going in and accessing my Hand tool here, or just typing H for the Hand tool, the universal shortcut is just simply press the space bar. No matter what tool I'm in, I will get the Hand tool. So I was maybe I'm in my cookie cutter mode. Type, push down the space bar, I get the hand tool and that allows me to move my image, let off the space bar and I go right back to the tool that I was using so that I don't have to go and do two or three extra steps right there. To zoom, it works as the same way as well. I'm working on something and I want, I'm editing certain portions of this and I want to get my zoom tool. I don't want to stop what I'm doing but I want to be able to zoom in quickly. If I hold down my command and space bar on the Mac or control and space bar on the PC, command space bar is going to give me my zoom tool. Allows me to go and zoom in to what I want, let go, and I'm right back to the tool that I was working with before. Great simple shortcuts to go ahead and use. So fit to window, zoom in, zoom out as we go. <clears throat> now dealing with actual sizes of images. Under the image menu here, we can find out what size our image actually is because we can have all different size images when we bring them in. An image size comes in two different sizes right here, not big and small, but image size in reference to are we talking actual dimensions of pixels or are we talking physical measurements here? This particular image is 14 inches and by about 11 inches here at 180 pixels per inch. Well, what does pixels per inch actually mean and why do we have to be concerned with it? Well, when you go and you get a digital camera and you start to take pictures with a digital camera, when you set your camera on the lowest setting, you are going to get lower resolution images, which is gonna mean fewer amounts of information in there, less pixels, less information, hence lower resolution. Two things that you need to remember, how you're going to go ahead and use your image and where the ultimately the um, end product is going to end up. If you want to use these on your home printer and make things look really nice, resolution of 150 on up is going to be more than enough for your home printer. If you're just going to be using these and posting these online just so people can see, a resolution of 72 pixels per inch is just fine because it doesn't display much more. If you want really good, high-quality, professional prints, a resolution of 300 works extremely well, okay? So low resolution is considered 150 and lower. Web, anything uh, for a website or display on a television or DVDs, you know, if somebody's going to put in a DVD to play, it's going to be lower resolution. <clears throat> now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you capture a picture, you have a fixed number of pixels in that image. We have 14 megabytes worth of information here. 2,600 pixels across, 2,000 pixels high. Pixels are like dollars in your checking account. There is a fixed number and it almost always goes down, okay? If I take this image and I want to make a high resolution image out of this, I can very easily go in here and say I want a high resolution image of it. If I make a high resolution image of this and say I want a lot of pixels per square inch, which is going to give me a large amount of information and a higher quality image. I am going to end up sacrificing the width and the height here because these are directly proportional. As I put more information in there, my image is going to be reduced. So as I up the resolution here, originally we started at 180, so my picture was 14 by 11. If I up the resolution, saying there's more pixels per inch, the physical size of my image goes down. 
if I lower the resolution, then the physical size of my image goes up. It goes up to 36 by 27. It still contains the same amount of information, but I'm changing the way the information is being displayed, low resolution or high resolution. What people try to do is they try to go in and take a very low resolution image and try to make it really big. It's like stretching something too far. If you've ever put something into a plastic bag and stretched it way too much, you put it in and it stretches thinner and thinner and thinner until it finally breaks. Well, there's only so much plastic bag that you can use. The same is true with pixels. If I put stuff into a plastic bag, is it going to get bigger to a certain point and it's going to fill up? The more I take out of a plastic bag, it's going to get smaller and the more room I have to use. Same works with the resolution. As the resolution goes down, my image gets physically larger measurement-wise because I'm taking those and making them uh, larger pixels, so lower resolution, and it's making the picture bigger. As the resolution goes up, I get much more, a lot more pixels in there, a lot smaller, a lot closer together, so the physical size gets smaller. What people like to do is they like to go in here and say, oh, I've got a really low resolution image here and I want to make this really big. Well, you either make it really big and say I need a 36 inch image, the resolution is going to go down. Image size goes up, resolution goes down. It's a balance that you have to have. You can't take a low resolution image, that's a very small low resolution image, and make it big because it's just going to get worse. It just takes that same amount of information and stretches it over a larger area, stretches it thinner and thinner. So keep in mind when you go in, it's best to start with images that are too big and reduce them down because you can always throw away information. Trying to make information and stretch it over an area when you don't have that amount of information, there you go. Same thing. If you have a dollar in your checking account, you can't buy something for $100 because you can't make it stretch that far. I don't care how you stretch it. Same is true with pixels. Okay. So when you are setting your camera, keep in mind, the lower your setting of your camera, the more pictures you get on your camera, the lower the resolution and the lower the quality you're getting with your images. You can't recapture that. There is no magic filter that says, put all those pixels back that weren't there. Okay? Take larger pictures, and then you can go ahead and reduce the file size down as you go. So this image, I can make it large or small, but I'm reducing the resolution in proportion to the actual image size here. If I want to go and I physically want to make this bigger, like I want to print it on a bigger piece of paper and like get a border around it, we can also go in and we can resize our canvas. This is different than our image. Our canvas is basically the canvas that we're working with here, the document size right here. <clears throat> with the image size that I had here, we're at 14 by 11. If I go under the image menu and I resize the canvas size here, what I'm saying is, I'm going to keep the image the exact same size here, but add more room around my image. Maybe you want to go ahead and have a white border around your image. I can do that. I can go in and I can increase my canvas size here, and all I'm doing is just using my up arrow here in the field, and what this is doing is it's adding space around my image, and if I want to click the relative button, I can just add a relative size to that, and when I do this, this is my normal size here. Keeping the image the same size, I am simply adding canvas around my image as such. Image stays the same size, I just made the document bigger, so I get that border around the whole thing. Very big difference between image size and canvas size. When you're dealing with your image, that's one thing. Canvas is, just think of it as the paper you're going to print it on. So we can kind of increase the size of that so we have more space around what we're doing. So. That's the image and the canvas size.